Hi, I'm Tom Sharman, and this is my summative presentation for the Web Development Workshop Unit. In this video, I'm going to take you through how I made the website and the processes it took to get there. From the paper wireframing to the live WordPress site, this unit has challenged me to learn new skills and explore creatively the power of the web. But before that, let's take a look at the recipe web page I made. It is fully responsive and styled using a gridded CSS boilerplate called Skeleton. This taught me the basics of a web page's structure and developed some of the very basic skills that I had before. It allowed me to experiment with my code and challenge my capabilities and also creativity. I then developed a recipe search engine called Expiry with the idea that users would search for foods in their kitchen which are running out of date and a list of recipes would appear for ideas for dinner. This used an API to collect the data and using jQuery I collected the information and displayed it on the dynamic web page. Using APIs before starting the website project was a good way to learn how they work and encouraged me to use APIs on the website. Both of these recipe pages were great practice in preparing me for the web development processes which followed. Hi I'm Harry and I'm an 18 year old singer songwriter from the east of England. Harry has a reach of over 50,000 fans amongst his social media platforms as he grows his music career and status as a YouTube celebrity. Currently, as it stands, he does not have a website and relies on the fans to follow him on various networks to receive updates such as new videos, tours and merchandise. Myself and Harry met to discuss some of the problems with not currently having a website, but also the aims we shared for the completed project. The problems with not currently having a website are as follows. 1. There is nowhere to showcase all of his work online for fans to go and interact. 2. Social media is great for exposure, but has limited capabilities and shows no effective way for Harry to increase his ticket sales. 3. And lastly, there is no easy way for fans to keep up to date. Following all of his social media accounts is both annoying and time consuming to filter through only the important information. Having the website would provide this in one place, visible for all. Now I also had some learning goals that I wished to achieve. These were 1. To improve my organisational skills and time management. 2. To develop my technical skills within HTML and CSS. And 3. To learn in further detail the processes made in order to create a website from the early beginnings to it being up and running online. I started by creating a mood board on Pinterest as a way to channel my ideas and start to visualise the project. This worked great in keeping my ideas organised and also allowed for Harry to join the board and contribute his ideas too. I believe that this collaboration between the client and the developer worked well in producing the final product. Once our ideas were down on a mood board, I then began to wireframe the basic structure of the website on paper to gain an idea of the look and feel for the site. After feedback from my peers, I refined the wireframes again on paper, including details of the content and improved layout following the web trends. The next step was to take these paper wireframes and make them digital. Using an online mockup maker, Mockups, I created digital wireframes which had hotspots allowing me to link pages together and start to develop the idea into a refined project. The digital wireframes displayed details of what the content would actually be. I then began to start creating the website in HTML and CSS. Using the CSS boilerplate skeleton, I used a 960 pixel grid system to add content and start to build the basic structure locally on my computer. Ok, so I had a basic website running locally, however, I wanted to add interactivity between the user and the site using jQuery. I started by learning the basics by completing the jQuery fundamentals challenge and began debugging broken code as practice for when mine breaks. This gave me a great idea of how jQuery can be used and encouraged me to implement it into the live site such as on the lookbook page using masonry. The next stage was to make a WordPress theme for the website. Using LearnPress, a starter theme, I created the pages using the previous code. I installed WordPress locally and then migrated it online to the Rave web server. I used the advanced custom fields plugin to make dynamic content such as the tour dates without the need for the client to edit the code. Here is the live website. 
On the home page it features a full screen video that is muted with volume controls in the top left. This is an introduction to Harry and a great way for any new users to become fans. As we scroll down the site there is information about the next gig he is playing at and a prompt to sign up to his newsletter to increase the reach for promotion. There is also a link to his lookbook page. On the lookbook page it features images of Harry in a blog format. This is for fans to easily find images of Harry in one place. This uses Masonry, a jQuery plugin that is responsive according to the browser size. Here is the tickets page. It shows a banner image of a recent show that he played with and again the next event along with lots of other gigs. This is to encourage ticket sales onto the website. For the watch page I built using PHP a video player that allows for the user to click on a recent video thumbnail and the source will change. The connect page encourages interactivity with Harry. It features an Instagram feed and Twitter feed for fans to keep up to date as well as important information such as how he can be contacted for business inquiries. The Terms and Conditions page, although it may be boring, can be easily updated using the Advanced Custom Fields plugin. This is great for updating the policy easily when him or his record label needs to do accordingly. There are many improvements that I wish to make after this unit, such as implementing e-commerce directly into the site to stop users coming away from the site when purchasing tickets. Throughout the process, I was blogging about various related topics. One that particularly caught my interest was blogging about a talk from Bruce Lawson about how to destroy the web. When talking about websites excluding parts of the world, he said that China is a tiny place. It is of no interest to you because it's only 20% of the Earth's population. So do not let these people look at your website. And India is 20% of the world's population. It's insignificant, and you should not let these people look at your website. This got me thinking and challenged me to design a website which was easy to view on all devices, aka responsive, but also accessible for everyone. Therefore, I aim to implement a translation aspect into the site after the project if the client feels this is essential for his users. Overall, I have thoroughly enjoyed this project and also learnt a great deal. It has challenged me in many ways, but also channeled creativity in other ways. To view the project in full, please check out the GitHub displayed on screen now. Thank you for listening. Tom Sharman, Ravensbourne Web Media, Level 1.